Hey guys, Kevin here. As you know, I recently upgraded my PlayStation 4. The drive that I chose was the Seagate Fire Cuda. Now the Fire Cuda is a gaming drive. It's designed specifically for gamers. It's a 2 terabyte drive, 7200 RPM and it has 64 megabyte cache. That is a marked improvement over the previous drive. This was the drive that I had before. You can see it there. Um, it's a Toshiba MQ1 ABD050 and this was a 500 gigabyte drive, 8 megabyte cache and 5400 RPM. So, Seagate claim that you can get up to 5 times performance but you know I don't think that's going to happen. There's a lot of limitations within the PlayStation 4 itself and with things like Saturn inter interfaces and things like that. So we're not going to see 5 times performance but what I wanted to do was do a test before I installed the drive and do a test afterwards to see how booting times and loading times and that compared. So what I've done is I've done a test and I've done a, a test with all of these games here. And what I've done is simply show the game loading up and you know then did the exact same thing and stopped it at the exact same point. Now this isn't the most scientific test in the world you know. There are some things that are out with my control such as um, the server. You know if Electronics Arts if they are server is a little slow one day when I did the test then it might you know sway the results one way or another and you know there's, there's nothing I can really do about that but what I did do was make sure I went through all the games before I recorded the footage I went through every game and installed I put the game on the game disc for each game put the game disc in and I made sure that all the updates are installed now if you're a Sony PlayStation 4 owner you'll know why I did that Sometimes you put on a game and you're ready to start playing and it says please download this huge update file. So what I've done is I've installed all the update files initially to make sure that everything was okay and then I've run the test and then I've done the exact same thing after I installed the 2 terabyte Seagate uh, Firecuder. So let's look at how these drives compare.
So I hope you've enjoyed looking at those results for the Seagate Firecuda. I found that, you know, booting up is slightly quicker. Navigating around the menu system does seem a, quite a little bit more responsive. The important thing is really is about the games though, and you don't see a huge improvement in games. You know, as you saw, I got a, a good improvement with Grand Theft Auto V and with Star Wars Battlefront, you know, I saw it increased over 30%. With most games, you know, you're just talking a few seconds, it's nothing really significant. As you saw, Metal Gear Solid actually was slower, which I guess is probably down to, you know, as I said, there's a lot of other factors, perhaps the, the server um, was slower that day, or perhaps my internet connection, there's maybe other things that, you know, that come into play there. If you've looked at, you know, if you've watched other videos, if you looked at other articles about this issue, then you probably know that these results aren't too surprising. There's a lot of tutorials and articles and videos about an original drive versus a hybrid drive against an SSD. And, you know, with a hybrid, you're getting more performance, but still get good storage. And with an SSD, you know, you'd normally have to reduce the amount of storage unless you pay crazy amounts of money, like hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, that kind of thing. Um, but really, the times, the boot times, the improvement of boot times and the improvement of loading times are not as great as you would maybe imagine, you know, for upgrading to, especially with SSDs, you know, with SSDs, you might, for certain games, again, it does depend on a game by game basis, but, you know, for an SSD, you might shave loading times from 30 seconds down to 20, but it, it really does depend on the game, whether that is worth it, I mean, you know, it depends, it really is down to the buyer, personally, I mean, I don't know. The, the fire could have paid £120, and in the UK, I could have paid um, around £80 for a 2 terabyte drive. So I've paid 50% more, and so I've got the same amount of storage. You know, I could have paid £80 and got a 2 terabyte drive at the same speed as before. I've paid a 50% premium to get the fire cuda. And what I've seen is I've got slightly better load times. The thing is, I didn't really think the PlayStation 4 was slow anyway. I didn't. I wasn't really disappointed with the speed of the Sony PlayStation 4. So, for me, probably you know, if I was a little bit more prudent, I was I was almost curious about it. But if I was more prudent, I probably should have just kept my money and spent the money on something else, a game or something or a few games. The thing is, if you've got the Seagate Fire Cuda and you put it into a laptop, you put it into a desktop because they do sell 3.5 inch versions of it. If you put it in a, a, you know, a computer, you're going to see a much better performance. You're going to see a much bigger increase in performance. What I'm saying here is the Sony PlayStation 4, it doesn't matter what hard drive you put in, there's always going to be limitations as to how fast you can improve the experience. You know, you're limited through the way that the, the system is designed and, you know, with the, the motherboard, the, you know, system, uh, the SATA uh, interface, you've got limitations as to, you know, the game developers, the way that they um, develop games and it's not like you're going to get a super fast experience all the time they can't really give you faster loading times or boot times or a faster experience if you're doing an online game so if you're playing Call of Duty or something like that it's not like you're going to get really really fast times compared to anyone else because they really do need to give everyone the same experience so again it's up to you the decision really is up to you I'm not disappointed with paying that extra money for the Seagate Fire Cooler, I'm happy with the drive, but I do think if I'd put that drive into a computer or a laptop, I would have seen a much, much bigger jump in, in performance. Would have I got the five times performance that Seagate promised? Probably unlikely, but I think if you're gaming on a laptop or a computer, you know, a desktop and you're playing games on Steam, for example, three, even three to four times would be a huge, huge boost. It'd be very, very significant. Fortunately, if you're a Sony PlayStation 4 owner, which is what this video is about, really, um, although it's about the fire cooler, it really is specific to playing games on the Sony PlayStation 4. And I do think that whilst it does improve performance, and you do get a five-year guarantee, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are other benefits as well, but I, I don't think it's worth the premium, really. Um, but it really is up to the it really is up to the user. If you look at it long-term, £40, if you're going to keep the... Um, which is about $50 in the USA at the current exchange rates. If you want to keep the PlayStation for, you know, another five years, say, $10 a year. I guess if you look at it that way, it's not so bad, you know. $10 a year, you know, works out, what, a dollar a month? 
to improve your performance of your PlayStation. So if you look at it that way, perhaps, perhaps that is the way to look at it. You know, for a dollar a month, if you span over five years, you're going to get a faster um, booting time, faster menu experience, and you're going to get, you know, improved loading times. As I said though, for me, the reason why I don't feel that it was that bad is because I didn't think the times were that slow before, but that's maybe because I've jumped from the PlayStation 3 only early this year. I'd love to hear what you think about this guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this video to you know give you an insight on this, but please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, especially if you've got the drive yourself. Uh, I'd really be interested to see whether those of you who have installed it on a PS4 are getting similar times. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, Take care.